Hello. In this presentation, I will show a migration of a Streambase 7 application to a Streambase 10 application. The Streambase 7 application makes use of a module parameter with its value modified by a deployment configuration, a child module, a third party Java library, a custom Java function in a map operator to use that library, a custom Java operator, and a custom log4j logging configuration to log to a file. Additionally, this application runs as a Windows service. The module parameter sets a timestamp format with the day first. When we see the date beginning with a year, that means our deployment configuration successfully overrode this default setting. The child module uses the module parameter and calls our custom function getNow. The getNow function uses the Joda time library, which is on the build path from the lib project folder. Streambase 7 uses log4j when running as a service. This logs standard out to the directory ctemp service simple service.log file. The add a parens custom Java operator modifies the first string field of the tuple. When we see parentheses in the output, this operator is working. The spdeploy deployment file overrides the time format module parameters. When running this in Streambase 7 Studio, the deployment file is not used, but the logging configuration is used and writes to the target log file. Now let's run it as a service. I've previously done the setup steps, so it's ready to go. For service configuration, use full paths. I'm running it under a user account in order to supply the needed environment variables for the service. If run using the local system account, the environment variables would have to be global, which is discouraged. We see that it's using the spdeploy file module parameter substitution to change the date format. Now we'll export the project and import it into Streambase 10. We'll be using Streambase 10 for the rest of this demonstration. It imports as a Streambase 7 formatted project. I'll upgrade it, which creates a new Streambase 10 formatted project. It warns us that the spdeploy file will not be used. The spd.spconf has been converted. All configurations need to be checked. Here's our application. And Upgrade has created an empty application for the new project, which we do not need. I see we have an error on the source for the custom Java function. It cannot find the third-party library. Streambase 10 does not use the project build path. Instead, it uses Maven. So although our library is present in the project, this is not where we want to get it from. Instead, we'll create a Maven dependency. After giving Studio a moment to process the palm, the Java error has gone away. Let's take care of some housekeeping. We'll let Studio refactor these sources into the project package. See that the engine configuration class name for the function is updated. To clear out the type check errors from that action, use a combination of Maven update project refresh, and reopening the source files.
Now let's replace the logging configuration. Streambase 10 always uses logback, so the log4j configuration will be ignored. We'll create an equivalent logback.xml configuration. There's no wizard for this, so I have to rewrite it in the logback format. We're now writing to a timestamp log file, which will be compressed when it rolls. One more bit of housekeeping. The builder has trouble with a comment block from a Streambase 7 generated template, so we'll remove it. If we leave it in, it will cause the build to fail. Now let's run it and see how we've done. It runs using the default time format. And it creates our log back configured log file. Now let's build it to a fragment archive ready for an application. We create an application project for deployment. Add the fragment as a dependency. and create a Streambase 10 Hocon deployment file to take the place of the SB deploy file. The application archive can be run in Studio to confirm our setup by using a run configuration. And we'll see the log file format is using the time format from the deployment file. As promised, let's run this as a Windows service. We copy the application archive to our deployment directory.
Then we install the service using the epadmin command. There's no registry editing required. Our new service appears after refreshing the services control panel. I edit the service to run under my user account. And then start the service. The service deployment and active node directories appear. And our log file using the replace time format. And upon shutting it down, we see the stopping messages. Thank you for watching this presentation. Please leave any suggestions or comments here or visit our community site. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.